address these problems. So that is the first thing. Now, coming back closer to my area, micro and nanotechnology, which is perhaps the most exciting, most promising technology for this century. Our applications are almost in any area that you can think of and there is plenty to do for everybody, irrespective of what your background is. Science, technology, all of these things are tied together in this area. This area is trying to take a pervasive information society that we are today to a pervasive intelligence society. What does that mean? It means that everything man made, we are trying to impart intelligence to it. Okay? I have no way of knowing, particularly when this light is glaring, I can't even see your eyes to figure out whether you are bored with this talk or you are listening, whether you are cursing me or you are enjoying the talk. I have no way of knowing it. Maybe I could make some sensors in your chair that could figure this out. So it's possible that you can have, in all man-made things, intelligence imparted. And what is intelligence? Intelligence is sensing, processing of information, and some actuation based on that information. So you make sensors, processes, which are already there, and actuators at that scale, embed in everything, you have got a pervasive intelligence society. Things can communicate with things. You are not limited to persons communicating to things and persons communicating to persons. So this entire cycle can be completed. For that, what are the engineering challenges? You will need tons of transducers, mobile devices, and you know, these kinds of appliances that you see already. If you look at what are actual engineering challenges, that is, you know, what kind of information these devices have to process, what kind of processing power is required for these, and what kind of energy will be required in each of these segments. And this is what segmentation you have to do to work on this to make it happen. This is a huge engineering challenge. So some examples of what kind of problems you can do when you build teams together, when you look at micro and nanotechnologies, you come uh, and not just look in your own silo, in your own field, but talk to your neighbors freely. Here is something called suspended gate field effect transistor coupled MEM sensor. This is a microphone. So I've been struggling with making a MEMS microphone which is very, very sensitive, okay, extremely sensitive. So when you try to make very sensitive microphone, you figure out that, okay, the transduction mechanism you use for sensing capacitors change when something moves very tiny bit. When you breathe over there, if I want to sense that, then the chain is so small that no capacitive sensing circuit is available today that can do it. And I'm struggling with it when I talk to my colleague from electrical communication engineering. Together, we come up with the idea that how about making this mechanical structure as a suspended gate of a fluid effect transistor. It becomes a suspended gate and the modulation that takes place because of the displacement of the gate, that gives you changes in drain current and then if you really try to take advantage of biasing this in sub-threshold voltage regime, then you get exponential change in current, drain current with tiny bit of change in displacement. So you get an incredible sensitivity coming out of this, right? But this is not possible if I, as a men's person, was working all by myself. And it wasn't possible for my colleague to think about this application either if he was only working by himself. So these kinds of things do happen. You know, you, you see these kinds of pictures all the time nowadays. Nano rods, nano ribbons, nano pods, everything, right? So one of our colleagues, Professor Shivsankar from Material Research Center, he creates these nano structures in such a simple manner, such elegant manner, that it's worth your admiration. It just takes it, puts it in a beaker, stirs it, puts it in a microwave, and there you go, that's it. And all kinds of nanostructures emerge, just from microwave irradiation. Amazing! So we have been so enthused with this method of doing it, that we have been looking at what all can we do with these structures. We're looking at LED applications,
applications we are looking at piezoelectric applications. Okay, I work with him on piezoelectric applications for making energy harvesting devices. While I speak, yes, you are listening to me, but it could possibly also generate tiny bit of electricity. Okay, if we had this entire wall lined up with these nano rods, okay, they will vibrate and they can produce el electricity. So this is possible. It's a possibility that you can do. Patents have been filed on this. Colleagues are working on taking a petri dish and growing neuronal cells on this and trying to stimulate them and make them talk to each other to understand how signaling takes place in these networks of neurons. But doing it outside your brain, learning all about it and then possibly controlling your brain. If you could do that, to get the low problem going, you wouldn't have to do dharma. You can just control all MPs' brains right from here and you will be done. You will have a low problem. Just scale. Okay. So it's possible. Now, come to agriculture. Agriculture is such a big thing in this country. How much science other than just in seeds goes into these things? other than seeds and uh, nutrition. We haven't been monitoring health of plants, right? But you can now have very tiny sensors that we could have sensor networks with, okay? So soil moisture sensor is just one to sense what is the content of moisture, but along with that you can put sensors for all kinds of nutrients for plants and every day a farmer can figure out how healthy or how sick a plant is. Right? So these are the kinds of problems which you can which you can now tackle. Look at you know such a simple structure as a cantilever beam. This has become such a fashionable and fascinating structure in nanotechnology. Just a cantilever beam, anything you hold like this is a cantilever beam. Okay? One end is fixed, other is free to deform. And now what we are able to do with this is we functionalize this and we invite antibodies to come there, okay? They bind with antigens. And because of the change that takes place on the surface, the beam can deform. If you can figure out that deformation, you can also figure out who are your guests on the cantilever beam. So much so, you can also do a little bit of vibration and just because a single virus molecule could come there, a single biological molecule come and sit there, that's enough of a mass to change its resonant frequency. What mass are we talking about? 10 to the power minus 21 grams. Zeto grams of mass you can detect with these nano cantilevers. When you get to that scale, then you figure out that the biggest problem is how do you get that electrical signal out? How do you get that out? It's so difficult. Now you have all kinds of, you know, this is tiny, tiny beam and you will have a big dumbbell sitting for optical detection with, uh, you know, laser spot and what not and that's not going to work. Right? So we have been working on this and we have come up with a scheme to make a piezo resistor, a metal piezo resistor. I have colleagues from materials here sitting who will know that metal piezo resistors don't have very good sensitivity to uh, change in resistance. They have lousy gauge factors. Okay? But we have been able to cajole these piezo resistors, metallic piezo resistors, to have better gauge factors than semiconductors at nano scale by guiding electrons at that scale to do nothing and moving some molecules here and there and creating tiny bit of voids which is done by electromigration. You can do that and lo and behold you get incredible change in piezo resistivity of metals. So these are the kinds of things you can do. Where do you do? Where and how do you do this kind of work? So there is a department now. This is the crash commercial part of this talk. Okay. There is a department at the Indian Institute of Science, which is Center for Nanoscience and Engineering. Please feel free to visit. This is where you can do all of this kind of work. It has taken us seven years to put this together because this kind of work requires an incredible facility, clean room facility, where you have 
very capital intensive equipment. We have put 120 crores in this building, okay, to create this infrastructure so that all of you, young people sitting here, you do not pass through your education system without dirtying your hand in a clean room. Okay? So you go there, you have, you know, for what, 40 years, engineers have graduated from our engineering colleges, electronics engineers, without ever touching a silicon wafer and doing anything on it. Okay? Doing any processing on it. That we have taken off. Now you can do this kind of work. You can create structures that you dream of. So this is a new India. Okay? We can do this kind of work. All equipments are available. Incredible kind of equipments that just about seven years ago, five years ago, seven years ago, we were dreaming that can this be possible? And everything is possible if you work in teams. There are lots of students from all over the country who are working in the center. Okay? These, these students are creating the kind of... Oops, there are... Looks like these students are coming very slowly on the screen. This is a presentation. Uh, the pictures are put by students and I'm sorry that it took so long. Along with students, there are 50 faculty members. Almost 50 faculty members from 14 departments working together. So this is what I meant by you build the team, you build the infrastructure for what you need to do. Some very senior colleagues at India Institute of Science and the council chairman of India Institute of Science, Dr. Kasturi Rangan, a man no less than him with so much of experience, he said in our presentation once that he did not think that such kind of interdisciplinary work will happen at this place. But it happens. When you are determined and when you are having fun, you can do lots of things. And that's all I wanted to tell you. In education, we have need for, look at this, this is some survey that says that 250,000 PhDs are required in nanotechnology alone by 2013. What should our share be? We are one sixth of the world population, every sixth person in the world is an Indian. What should be our share? And where are we? How many are we producing? So, in conclusion, most excitement in research today is in interdisciplinary areas. Okay? Lots of excitement. Micro and nanotechnologies provide a wonderful opportunity for all of us to work in this area. Interdisciplinary work requires reaching out. This is very important. Leaving one's comfort zone. It won't happen if you are very comfortable in your own area and don't you know, very averse to looking stupid in front of your colleagues if you have very basic questions from another area. So you have to get out of that comfort zone and you have to learn new terminology, new techniques, new things from other fields. Then only this kind of work is possible. Advice for students. Identify your calling. Please do area that excites you. Educate yourself in that area a little bit and find out grand challenges. Do some ba background work to assess what is the scale of the problem. If there is no scale in a problem, it's probably not worth working. Okay? You, you work for 8 years, 10 years and if it doesn't make a difference to the world, that problem is probably not worth working. Do not limit yourself to disciplinary boundaries form multidisciplinary teams, clubs to educate each other. And this is something that Manohar was pointing out too, that you've got to have friends, you've got to have teams to work on these kinds of things. And that's all I have to say to you. Thank you very much. Please, you can keep your beverages either hot or cold. An innovation, an innovative gadget and a great way to keep the memory of this event alive as it can be branded with the event messaging. Professor Pratab, we hope that this smart innovation helps us sustain the warm memory of the time spent out. Ladies and gentlemen, to present the memento, may I now call on Mr. Shahid Ahmed, President, Pandi Solutions, Jedi Parker on stage. Sir, so, if you kindly come to the stage.
Thank you guys, ladies and gentlemen.